Today on Community Cooking, we have guest Vandana Sheth making another amazing meal. Moroccan vegetarian stew with tomato and cucumber salad and couscous. We're cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. So grab a seat and get comfortable. We have another great meal for you. This is your Community Cooking. Hi, and welcome to Community Cooking. I'm your host, Maria Prekajis, and I'm so excited to have back in our kitchen, Vandana Chef, one of my dear friends. Welcome. Thank you, Maria. Great to be back. We love having you. You're like a, just a ray of sunshine in here. You're a licensed nutritionist, and you always bring great food that's good for you. Absolutely. As a registered dietitian, I love talking about food and how it can be tasty and delicious at the same time be healthy. Well, and this meal that we're going to cook, it's vegetarian, and some people might go vegetarian, whatever, does it? I'm not a vegetarian, I want my meat. But you're going to prove them all wrong that it tastes good, and then you still get all your nutrients. Absolutely. Just because it's vegetarian doesn't make it um, not tasty or not satisfying. The key is to make sure you mix the right ingredients, add some herbs and spices and flavors, colors, and you'll be blown away. So give me the ingredients for the stew, because that's what we're going to start with. So we're going to make a Moroccan stew. So our key ingredient is garbanzo beans, and we're going to add some golden raisins. You could add any kind of raisins or dates if you choose to. Oh, I love that, the sweet and salty. Exactly, and we're going to add spices, our favorite. Yes. So we have garlic, cumin and coriander, we have cinnamon, we have cayenne and paprika. I added a little smoked paprika this time, and there's turmeric. Those are the spices with, of course, salt and pepper. And as far as vegetables go, we are adding an onion, some carrots and sweet potatoes. The combination of these things and finishing off with a green leafy uh, vegetable is going to make it really vibrant. And then it's tomato sauce is the base as well. And then is it vegetable broth then? Since it vegetarian? is. It okay. is. It's a vegetable stock, so it's going okay. to add some nice flavors. Oh, I love it. I love it. And I really love the golden raisins. I, I love cranberries, dried cranberries mm -hmm. or raisins but I like the golden ones the best. They have the best flavor, I think. Nice texture, too. All right, so what should we do for starters? So I'm gonna just start the, uh, the stove on. Okay. So it heats up a little bit. And, and you don't have to make it in a big stew pot. If mm -hmm. you have one, great. If not, I like the thick Exactly, just a little pans. nice saucepan will do. Yeah. And so I'm gonna start with the onion. You get the onion. And then if I... <laughs> <laughs> I could I. And if you wanna do either the carrots or the sweet I'll potatoes. I'll peel some carrots. We'll Perfect. start there. Perfect. One step at a time. I love to buy carrots like this um, and peel them. The baby carrots are good, but for cooking especially, I mean, like these. So, registered dietitian, how did you get into that? Did you wake up one day and say, I need to just learn all about this and help people? You know, I just love food, and I realized my passion for health and wellness very early on in my life, and I found that being a dietitian gave me the capacity to talk about food and to show people how to eat flavorful foods that are good for you. Well, and you, as I said earlier, you have such an amazing attitude and you just bring, you know, positive vibe wherever you go. So helping people is in your DNA. Thank you. I love it. So what a great way. And, I mean, people come to you, do you work with them on, a, you know, most clients on a regular basis, like once a week, or how does that work? It really depends. Some clients I see on a weekly basis until they feel comfortable and they're good to go. Sometimes I just see someone once, get them started, and then they follow up as needed. Oh, great. So, so whatever your needs are. Exactly. So do we like to slice the carrots or chop them fine like the onions? Um, maybe like half. Okay. So just chop them up half. All right, perfect. You do one, I'll do one. And now the sweet potatoes, are we going to peel them? Or we do. Them? We okay. have to peel them. And so cut the ends I'll off. And I'll go into peeling. Perfect. And sweet potatoes are so good for you. They are. They're loaded with fiber and they're a nice, colorful vegetable. They add a little sweetness. Which I love. And this, uh, you know, there's protein with the garbanzo beans. Right. And you get the lycopene, which is a great nutrient from tomatoes, especially canned tomatoes. Which uh, is so funny because most everyone says, don't cook your vegetables or your, you know, your fruits, and tomato is better sometimes out of the can. Right, and lycopene is a nutrient of interest, especially for cancer prevention. 
That, I was going to say, what's it for? Of course. Yeah. Of course you know. Get all my free advice from you <laughs> right here Why right not? now. Um, so and then the garbanzo beans, this is easy because it's from a can. Or it you is. can, how if you just buy them? You can actually pick them up in a dry bin at a grocery store, soak them overnight and cook them and use them for multiple recipes. Or you can buy them from a can. With a can, do you want to make sure that you rinse it out thoroughly if you're trying to watch your sodium okay. or get a low sodium version as well? Well, and I think rinsing them too because you can always add salt, but if there's too much, and I crave salt, and I know I shouldn't have a lot, but sometimes the canned beans, as you said, carry a little salt, so you should rinse them. They do. So it looks like our pan is ready. It's warmed up. I'm adding some oil. You can choose to add the oil of your choice. Okay. I'm using some canola oil here. Those are easier to peel than I thought. Yeah, isn't that funny? And if you hear that sizzle, our pan and oil is ready. We're adding some onions. And then we want these the same as the carrots? Exactly. Okay. You want a sharp knife because they definitely are hard, but not too hard to cut. Once you start putting onions and carrots in, the smell is already awesome. Oh, it already smells so good. All right. There are some sweet potatoes. Perfect. And it's colorful, too. I like to use red onions. I like the flavor. And as you always say, it adds color. It does. Which is always good. You see the food first. Right. We eat with our eyes, right? Yes. It's all totally. about how appealing it looks. I'm not going to eat something, you know, unless it's, I know it's chocolate ice cream that's brown and that's, doesn't look too appetizing. <laughs> well, I think sometimes, too, I was talking about it with you earlier, that try vegetarian recipes here and there. Right. If you don't have any... Ease into it, as I like to say. Just ease into it and give it a try. And even if it's once a week, it could be Meatless Mondays are a great new campaign where we're promoting more plant-based foods. Yeah. And you can go online for more recipes and find some great choices. Well, that's the thing. You can find so much now online. It's amazing. There's you no can. excuse. I mean, I always say we all need a little guidance because, you know, what's good and what's bad for you. Most people do. That's true. And I think a lot of people think, e think that eating healthy is more expensive, but not necessarily what the we case. have here is not at all. No, and you can shop at the farmer's market or your local grocery store. Look for things that are in season. They're usually fresher and cheaper and flavorful because the nutrition is just packed since yeah. the season. Or you can buy frozen vegetables and use them or canned products. It can be just as good. Okay, so our onions look just about ready. You just got them a little translucent. Just a little bit. And we're going to add our garlic. Oh, of course. Why wouldn't we? Right? And, and it's a one-pot meal. It That's is easy. a one-pot. Easy cleanup. Yes, we love that. We love that. Absolutely. And so now that that's done, just give it another few seconds. And what I'm going to do is actually add our spices. Okay. Because that wakes them up. So this has got cumin and coriander. Say, wake up, spices! <laughs> <laughs> and this one is cinnamon. I just love cinnamon. Which, and I thought cinnamon, but I trust you. You know what you're doing. It's going to be good. And there's some turmeric, of course. Yes, I love turmeric. And add some paprika and cayenne. So I just learned the difference. Smoked pap paprika really has a good flavor. It does, right? It, it has does. a neat, smoky aroma to it. Yes. Not that it's more spicy, it just adds a new flavor yeah, profile. It does, most definitely. You notice, you can smell the spices. Oh, we always say we wish we had smell-o-vision. Yes. It'd be lovely. So that looks like it's ready. Okay. And we are going to add our broth. Because it's a stew and it will take a little while to cook up? Or it I mean, will. All, okay. It will, especially the sweet potatoes, so about 10 to 12 minutes. Okay. So we want to just start adding everything in and let it simmer away. So I added the it. carrots. And easy. It is. It's so easy. It's a one-pot meal. I'm stealing a golden raisin before we put it in. 
They're so yummy. So we raisins gonna, get a bum rap sometimes. They do. They are a delicious choice. Mm -hmm. They can be concentrated in sugar, so you obviously don't want to go crazy with them, but they can be a nice addition to a, a healthy way of eating. Yeah. All righty. So the garbanzo? Yeah. We can go ahead and add the That's garbanzo. That's a heavy garbanzo bee. <laughs> <laughs> That's about two cans worth. Hearty. Right. And that's what's going to be so great. And then we're going to add our tomatoes and raisins and bring it to a boil and turn it down. Let it simmer away. So, so easy. You can get everything at the store. Most of it, unless you do the garbanzo beans yourself, um, most of it you can just get just in put that cans. And of course, fresh spinach. And that will be at the end? That'll be the tail end, just till okay. it wilts a little bit so you add some fresh color to it. And that's it. We're just going to let this boil and simmer. For about 10, 15 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes. Again, we're not using any meat, so we don't have to worry. You could eat it as is. You could, but the sweet potatoes you <laughs> yeah. do want to cook them. Yeah, you so want to cook them. But I was going to say, nothing in there would be hazardous to your health. True. Because there's no meat. True. What's one piece of advice you could tell people who want to change things up but want to take baby steps? What's one thing... Not the, the only thing you would. No, the but the would one tell. biggest step you can take for your health is eating more vegetables, eating more plant-based foods. So fruits and vegetables, if you can load up on vegetables at every meal, you're guaranteeing a lot of nutrients, a lot of fiber, color, antioxidants for a very low calorie budget. Well, see, I, I'm all about, I like a lot of food. So that's why I'm salads and veggies all the time because it fills you up. It does, and it's, it's easy. Yeah. There's not much prep work to it. And with our farmer's market here at Torrance, it's so wonderful. It is. We're so lucky. We're so lucky. All right. Well, while that's simmering, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to do a nice light cucumber and tomato salad and some couscous. Couldn't be more simple. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You're watching Community Cooking. Every year, humans habitually gather for what they call the summer barbecue. Unfortunately, leaving hot coals improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. No, could it be? Night is smoky. By George, it's Smoky Bear. These friends are going to learn a thing or two about extinguishing hot coals. Indeed, it looks as if Smoky is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good stir. Next, another long, quenching drink for the hot coals. Chilling. And finally, a close feel to confirm they're safe to leave. Smokey has this master. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Bang on, Smokey. Hey, Smokey. Catch. Oh. My bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to Community Cooking. If you're just tuning in, I'm your host, Maria Prekajis, and I'm with my great friend, Vandana Chef, and we just are bubbling our Moroccan stew. Exactly, it smells so good. I, it it took the words <laughs> out of my mouth. It smells so great. Um, so that's bubbling for a few more minutes. So while that's doing its thing, we're gonna make couscous and then a lovely salad to go with it. Exactly, just finish off the meal. So ingredients are simple. Very simple. So couscous really, it's a type of pasta. It's made from wheat and it's from Africa. And since we're going with the Moroccan theme, it goes perfectly as the base. All you need is just water or broth, but since we're making something so flavorful, I think just water works perfectly. Just bring water to a boil. I've just turned it on, I'm waiting for it to boil. When it's ready, we're going to toss the couscous in and cover, turn it off, and let it just sit around for okay. five minutes. Couldn't be more easy, I love that. And you can use, besides couscous, you could use quinoa or rice, but I love couscous, so exactly. thank you. Oh, Thank good. You. And then for the salad, simple, simple. Really simple. So it's uh, cucumbers. So I like these Persian cucumbers. I was going to say, they're so cute. Yeah. And what's neat about these is the peel is really thin and there's hardly any seeds. So it's easy to just eat as is. Okay. So we're going to leave the peel on, just chop this up, add some tomatoes, some onion, um, some mint. You could add parsley instead, but I think mint adds a really nice, refreshing taste. I was going to say, especially with the stew, isn't heavy because it's vegetarian, mm -hmm. but it's going to be so flavorful that that mint will just accompany Simmer things. Yeah. Right. And then add some lemon for some extra flavor. 
Oh, I love That's that. That's it? I love it. And you're a registered dietitian. We talked about this earlier. Do you ever make a meal that's bad for you? <laughs> you know, I, I truly <laughs> believe there is no good or bad foods. Yeah. It's all about balance. It's all about figuring out, okay, it's going to be 80-20. 80% of the time, we're making conscious, healthy decisions. And 20% of the time, we have those mindful moments or those indulgences that we can savor and enjoy. Well, and I think you hit the nail on the head when you say savor. We all, even with our meals, we're in such a hurry. We eat in front of the TV, we're shoveling it in, but savor it with friends and family, your children, your spouse, whomever, and actually enjoy the meal. True, it's not just about the food, it's about the whole experience. Yes. Sitting down to eat and sharing a conversation, taking our time eating. It takes about 20 minutes for your brain to recognize your fault. So often we don't even do that. Right? Yeah, usually my meal's down in like seven, so yeah. I love that. So is our, wa oh, our water's boiling. Oh, it's just about ready. Just a couple more Perfect. seconds. And then we'll just, it couldn't be easier. So Want to go onions? ahead and start yeah. chopping the I onions? always let the guests chop the onions because <laughs> I am the worst and I cry all the time. So, and you always, I never take enough of the peel off. Sometimes I have some left, so don't be shy about that. There we go. And a yellow onion. So this is actually a sweet white onion, and so love it's not those. going to be too sharp in our salad. Thank you, because I love onions, but usually I have to cook them, but I love a sweet onion. Right, this is a Maui onion. Oh, who doesn't love those? Or anything called Maui. <laughs> <laughs> Although Southern Cal's are pretty darn good. It's so. not too shabby. And you got all the vegetables at our farmer's market, which exactly. is so great. Sometimes sweet onions, they always have them there, which is nice. They do. And you can always find them at your local grocery store if yeah. your farmer's market doesn't have it. Perfect. So I'm just add half. Okay. Oh, and our water's boiling. Okay, perfect. So it might be time. And that's, so you don't, it's not a lot of water and a lot of couscous, and then it absorbs right away. It does. I love it. And once it comes to a boil, it's just about ready. I'm going to turn it off, and that's it. So easy. We love easy meals, and we're only adding one pot and one bowl. That's it. It's so simple. All right. So now the cucumbers. We'll add the onions right, in add first. Add the onions in. And if you let the salad sit in the fridge for about half an hour to an hour, the flavors yeah. are going to be better. I even, when I use lettuce-based salads, when I make that, I throw that in the fridge dress because it just it gets everything. It does where it's supposed to be. So do you want to get the tomatoes, cucumbers? What do you want to do? Uh, and I'll... Cucumber's my favorite. Okay, cool. I'm giving you the tomato there, my no friend. Worries. And these are so small you can just slice them, right? Exactly. They're bite size. Now cucumber is one of my favorites for sure. And I don't mind these and the English cucumbers are great. Right. But these just have a better flavor. Well, let me be the judge. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, they do. They're so good. Persian cucumbers. Persian cucumbers. And the tomatoes and cucumbers, you really can chop them however you choose. Now, how did you start to like cooking and cooking good food and researching it? And how, how did that become, come about? When, after you became a registered dietitian? No, actually it started from when I was a young child. I loved watching my mom cook, shop and cook. It's just She was a true inspiration to me. And it's a funny story. She wouldn't let my sister and I help in the kitchen when we were young. No way! She wanted us to just enjoy our lives. She'd shoo us out of the kitchen and say, you're going to have to do this when you're older anyway. So why don't you just go enjoy life? And oh, that's so sweet, It was. Though. And so I would always sneak in and try and do something for her. And that's how I started my passion for food. Oh, that I love because so... So many people have a passion for food. It started with their families or their mothers or their grandmothers. Yep. And, and coming know. from a culture, I mean, I'm Greek, so it was meals are part of our lifestyle. It's a huge part of your lifestyle. Let's uh, add, let's see, one, one more. more tomato. Well, I'd like a lot of salad, so. Oh, and this is a perfect lemon. It is. And you want to just squish that first? Yep. It's pretty squish. It is? Oh, okay, it's good. It's pretty squish. <laughs> but yeah, you always you get your muscle. Do a little muscle exercises when you do that. And just juice of one lemon? Yep, or even okay. half, depending okay. on how juicy it is. This one's pretty juicy. Okay, so we might just need half. For certain. Uh, one more cucumber, or are we good? I think we're good. What okay. do you think? Our bowl uh, is getting pretty beautiful. full. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our bowl 
And then we're going to some fresh mint. And just a rough chop? Just a rough chop. So you can With any fresh herbs, any. I'm always picking them off. But the little stems and mint doesn't have very big stems. No. And, you know, this is just smells so good. I love mint in a salad like this, especially with what we're having it with. It's going to go well. It's going to pair up really well. I'm just cutting it. You can smell the mint. Oh, I love it. It's a little mint. Oh, yeah. That smells good. Yep. And then we're just going to add the lemon in. Seedless. And the trick is if you just poke it a oh, little yeah, bit, here. right? Just poke it a little bit. That's going to let the juices run. Oh, that's easy. Okay, all the lemons. Right. Because I always use either, you know, one of the squeezers, but that's a great idea. I'm always learning on the show. I love it. It's fun. And then we're just going to add some salt and pepper. I can do that. Yeah, go ahead and sprinkle on. There's a little spoon, a little salt. There you go. That okay. should be good. And oh. then some pepper. And I love fresh ground pepper. Uh, this is bubbling up. Holy cow, I love it. Oh. And then just mix this. And that's it. Yeah, give it a toss. Yeah, we, You're we gonna overloaded need, the bowl. We did, didn't we? Do you need another spoon? Maybe. That might work. Perfect. Now I feel at home tossing salad. Oh my gosh, that mint with the lemon already smells so great. And it's yeah, so half an beautiful. onion, plenty. Clean up here. Mm. Oh yeah, that smells wonderful. Okay, shall we plate one up? A little couscous? Let me double check on the couscous and see if it's ready. You're looking for it to be fluffy. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yep, it's ready. Now, would we add the spinach at this point, right before exactly. we plate it up? Okay, exactly. so right before. So we're just going to add the spinach in. You could chop it up, but I really don't think it needs to be chopped yeah, up. Yeah, because it gets so. It's like when you saute spinach, you start with this huge mound, and then you have this little thing left. Right, this it totally portion. wilts up. So oh, look at that look at color. That. I Just love the spinach at the end. A lot of people can, don't do that in stews. No, stews. and you could add arugula, you could add collard greens, any greens that you like. Spinach is mild and it's yes. something quick. And it's so, well, all of the greens are good for you, but that really is. And here's a neat thing. Um, if you're a vegetarian, people are always concerned about their iron status. Yes. And so we know green leafy vegetables have a lot of iron. But what's interesting is when you have an iron-rich vegetable with something that's acidic or citrus, your body absorbs more of the iron from that vegetable. Really? Yeah, so when you add the spinach to a tomato-based stew, your body is going to absorb almost six times more iron from this meal. So when I grew up, all of our green leafy vegetables, we would put lemon on them. See, that's an amazing thing. I mean, that was, well, my grandmother, we used to, she used to say, pull over the car, and we'd go to a vacant lot, and she would pick greens and we're like we're really eating those for dinner and she would douse them with lemon barely steam them and then douse them with lemon so i didn't know that that's a natural technique and i'm sure ancient cultures knew this yeah sometimes we just do things without recognizing why i never knew that that is a great fact so, so anything nice. acidic with green leafy you absorb more of the nutrients exactly and right. so i'm just going to test our sweet potato and see if it's done okay almost okay and so if you like it a little hearty, we are done. <laughs> I like it a little al dente sweet potato. I, I eat eggplant sweet potato once in a while. You, you shouldn't every day by any means. But I'll always <laughs> munch on it when I'm cooking raw, which yeah. is not the best. All right, well, we'll let that simmer a little bit more. We'll take a quick break. If we come back, we will plate it all up and get to taste it. I can't wait. You're watching Community Cooking.
Welcome back to Community Cooking. All right, it's my favorite part. Gra look, we even made one for each of us. <laughs> it's a delicious meal, right? Oh, it looks Colorful, so good. Colorful, tasty. I'm gonna taste the salad first. Good idea. Mm. The mint. You've sold me on the mint in mm. a salad. That is so good. I'm gonna do the couscous plain and then Actually, I'm going to do it all together. Who's kidding who? And then the stew. Mm. I want a good big bite. First off, you would never know there's not meat in here. It is so rich and hearty and flavorful. And all the spices, while you can't taste them individually, they all meld together perfectly. Perfect, right? I was going to say, you, if you wanted to not make it vegetarian, you could add boneless chicken breast. Sure, you could. But why? It's perfect. It's easy. And you saw how quick it was. Really doesn't take long. No, not at all. In one pot and you're done. Yep. I love it. Thank you so much for coming in. Your recipes were amazing once again. Thank you. My we love, pleasure. We love having you here and we really encourage you to try these recipes at home. And from all of us here, thanks for watching. And remember, we really do have some of the best chefs right here in our own community. And we'll see you next time on Community Cooking. If you'd like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations. That's 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200 in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number displayed on the screen. And don't forget you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. That's located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, email us at communitycooking at torrentca.gov and check us out online at youtube.com slash torrentcitycable and like us on Facebook at Community Cooking TV.